What is up guys? I got my friend Scotty in town and for those of you that don't know who Scotty is, he's Wildfly Productions on YouTube and he makes fly fishing films and when I say films I mean like legit films so you should go check them out. Whether or not you're into fly fishing it's like time well spent because I love when people put solid production value into YouTube videos. So we're gonna try to go use the plane to access fly fishing. Now here's the caveat. When we planned this trip, we didn't realize that there was gonna be such a gnarly winter. So right now we have unprecedented snowpack. Fishing's gonna be tricky. So we're gonna jump in the plane, bring some rods. I don't have super high confidence that we're gonna find anything, but we're gonna at least go on a scouting mission, try to see if we can get somewhere, get the tires dirty, Dude, it's gonna be hopefully get some flies wet. Should be a good time. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Sweet. Can you hear me? Yeah, dude. I can hear me. We're dialed in. This works. Headsets on. This is real. Nice not having to go through uh, TSA. We're rolling, baby. Just line up. Get into the throttle. Release brakes. Once it's at the speed, the tail will come up, and then uh, once I see the airspeed alive, I can just rotate. Oh, damn. It's so quick. That felt long to me. <laughs> but that's always my, my first judge of performance for the day, is that first takeoff. Uh, you know, I've flown this thing much heavier than this on much hotter days, but I've also flown it a lot lighter on colder days, so the performance changes based on all that, like, at all times. How does the, like whether it's hot or cold, the kind of temperature, how does that factor into to the flying? So yeah, density altitude can be a real thing. So an aircraft's performance, the higher you go or the thinner the air, the, the basically faster it's flying over the ground. So when it's taking off, it needs to generate way more airspeed. But if your engine's not making as much effective power, it takes even longer. So, you know, up here compared to sea level, it's not uncommon for people to have double the takeoff distance. Um, and up in the mountains, it's uh, unfortunately what causes accidents pretty much every year is density altitude. I know you kind of talked about it, but like, when was it when you really started, you were flying around and you started picking up fly fishing as like something to do along with flying and just another thing in your life? So I really, I mean, I've been flying, I've had this plane for I think eight years. I saw that memory pop up and I feel really old because of that, but I didn't get into fly fishing until two years ago. I was going up for a backcountry trip in Idaho. Idaho's like the Mecca because there's that whole Frank Church wilderness that they have these old airmail routes. They're, they're, they're airstrips for planes from way back in the day, but they're like grandfathered in. So this wilderness you can't access by anything motorized except for airplanes or like jet boats. So it's a really fun place to go play with, you know, bush planes and go explore this beautiful country. Um, and one of my buddies was like, hey, I'm bringing a fly rod, you should get one. And I knew nothing about it. And I just went to Cabela's and bought one. I'm up there and flailed. And that was when, when I came back, it was kind of like, okay, but yeah, as far as the marriage of, of bush flying and fly fishing, it's something that I like am just starting and I'm really, really excited about. I need yeah. to get up to Idaho. I haven't been back since that first time, so that's on my, my hit list. What it's such a good tool to use to get up here and scout out a new area. Hundred percent. And get to see water from a different angle. So there's one zone that could potentially play. Just don't know how wet or dry it is. So just so you understand my thought process right now, I'm basically looking for power lines or obstructions or anything that would stop us from being able to get closer and take a look at this thing. And I didn't see any. So what I'm gonna do is slow up. We'll turn the other way and we'll fly over it and just see you know, how feasible it looks or if it even looks worth it too from a yeah. fishing standpoint. We looked at this on Onyx and I know somewhere in here it turns to private land. I know on the far side of that fence I was just looking at is, is uh, BLM Forest Service. Oh, dude, that looks so sick. Dude, that does look pretty good. So the only possibility, see the fence? Right after that is kind of what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, yeah. The question is, how wet and soft is this stuff? Dude, that might be worth dragging. What are your thoughts? I mean, looking at this creek, it's the first of all of them. I'm kind of surprised at how good it looks. I don't know if there's any fish in there. It's an option though. Yeah, I mean, it looked pretty dang good in terms of, it's got some deep holes, some good movement, moving water, definitely a good option, like right there, like a deep little tail out. Yeah, 
You want to pop on Onyx and just confirm what I believe I know, yeah. which is that it's public. And so that would put me landing downhill, which is not ideal, but what is nice about it is it, it makes a go around very, very easy. Basically what I'm gonna set up for is uh, a drag where I'll go and actually drive my wheels down it once we see. Yeah, so that where we, were, where we just flew over is National Forest land. Cool. So we should be good. That 100% goes if you want it. Sick. You want to do it? Dude, we should poke at it. Let's let's check it out. Okay. So right there, what you're doing is... You're I was checking to see if mud starts flinging off the tires. Okay. So, because it looks dry, and that's like a couple of the sayings we have is if it looks smooth, it might be. If it looks rough, it is. Yeah. Um, and also, <laughs> if it looks dry, it might be. So that was one of those that I was checking. Is it dry? Because it looked dry. Plenty smooth. I'm totally happy. Plenty, so, plenty fishy too, right? All right, we just landed at a creek I've never landed at. I don't know why I've never landed here. I think because normally this creek isn't flowing. And I am blown away because I did fly a week or so ago and we buzzed over this just lightly and this was like, just solid mud and up here was still covered in snow so that's why this morning I didn't have super high confidence but uh, I, I have no idea if there are any fish in this creek but knowing that the rainbow trout are about to go into spawn there's some logic thinking that they should be swimming up these to find their spawning ground so what we're gonna do get weighted up and work our way downstream because just upstream of us is private property so that doesn't play but we could fish our way up to here what do you think First off, it was really cool to like do a couple of circles and actually get to see a top down. Cause usually, even standing up here is top down, but usually you're kind of water level, right? So you don't really have a good perspective of like the holes and the, the structure of the river. Um, but actually getting to come down here, I'm really impressed with how clear it is. Uh, seeing some of the other rivers around here that have been pretty blown out. This is really, really clear. So there's some, some, some good depth, some good flow. It's not too fast. So I feel pretty dang good about it, dude. And again, the whole purpose of this is to explore, right? We're gonna explore new water. That's why I didn't go immediately to my other backup spot. And I'm really excited that we have time to try this. Hopefully, either we get into fish here or the wind stays calm enough for us if we need to pull an audible and go somewhere else, we can. So we just spooked a fish. There's hope. I just went from like a, dude, I, maybe I'm just always like kind of a little bit pessimist. I was like, I don't know. But if we spooked one, now it's just, what are they gonna eat? Yeah, that was a that's, good sign. That's a that really a pretty, good sign. Pretty solid fish for this little creek. So our plan is we're walking down to uh, almost the lake. All of this is forest service land, so it's public. Although there is a fence here, so someone must have a, a permit to uh, run cattle on it. Right, now you think we should work our way down farther, right? Yeah, I think if we can get closer to the lake, uh, closer to kind of where the fish are moving up into it, it's probably gonna be good. We're gonna find some bigger holes. 700 yards, it says that we're away from the mouth. I want to find one of these deep pockets that just kind of drops in and yeah. is a little slow. Yeah, dude. dude, we found fish! 
Hell yeah! <laughs> Dude, there are fish in here. There are fish. Look at that. So it makes me wonder if they're just farther upstream right now. They might be. Well, just to check focus. Yeah, I'm good. There we go. Oh, oh dude. dude. That was a beast. That was a big that fish, a huh? Did you hit hindsight? Bro! It's on again. Got him. No way! Got him. No <laughs> yes! No way, dude. No way, that's a stud. That's a stud. Dude, Let's that is a... Dude, how do you keep getting into big fish out here? <laughs> you want me to net oh, that for you? there's another one down there. There's another... We finally found him, it looks like. Oh, no! <laughs> dude, look at... There's, there's like... Oh, look at there's the one chasing thing. that one. Dude, he might eat your egg right now. He... Oh! Dude, what is happening right now? Dude, they're looking at it. Oh, here it comes. Oh, shit. Dude, he's following it. Wait for the tension. No way. Dude, that's the weirdest. <laughs> yeah. Wait till the bobber pulls. We can't see it on the camera, but we can see the fish just following his flies, and he's into it. No way! What the hell? Dude, dude. no! <laughs> what is happening, man? What is wrong with me, dude? You're onto like, that was what, three or four? I was like, that was absurd, dude. <laughs> just like high sticking, just plopping what? it in. That was a monster! All right, so this has all kind of worked out better than I expected. We uh, found a place to land, first place we looked at, and Scotty got into fish. I had no such luck, but at the end of the day, my goal here was to get Scotty out and kind of show him what, uh, what I'm into. And the funny thing is, I was telling Scotty, I don't think I said it on camera, but it's really cool, the coming full circle that I got really into bush flying, built to this skill set that really was just to go and, and it was like riding a dirt bike, right? I was doing the flying for fun, which is still super fun. But having a purpose and getting to use those tools I've built over the years to come in, like scout and land somewhere new, even with a passenger to go fishing, is like, it was kind of the cool culmination. Like that's what I've been going for for a long time. And that's one thing I should mention. Um, we both use Onyx. We, I use off-road, you're on hunt. I've been using Onyx forever and Onyx is the sponsor of this video. So thank you Onyx. It's been an incredible tool. Like I can say this as wholeheartedly as anything that I think it's probably the most valuable digital asset as a kind of an off airport pilot out there. L knowing land ownership, being able to drop pins. If you say you're gonna go and land somewhere like this and we want our buddies to come link up, I can go and find the best roads and build a route just by tapping along the, the dirt roads out here and it'll build a perfect route. I can share that with them. Obviously all their maps you can download and use offline. They've got a ton of data like with land ownership that's always critical, not only just knowing what's public land or wilderness or all that, but there are times when we get invited to land on friends' properties and being able to map that out and see the land owner's name on that parcel is super helpful. Oh, another like cool feature that I just found out they have, which is similar to some other aviation apps. If you push with two fingers, you can measure the distance between two things, just like dropping a ruler on, which I use all the time for figuring out landing areas. You know, Onyx also, I mean, they have backcountry, they have the hunt, they have off-road. I, I know they have more in the works, but just the off-road one, I, again, they have a snow mode for snowmobiling. It'll show you slope aspect, give you avalanche forecasts. Like I use this thing year round. If you're anyone that does anything outside or outdoors, you should probably have Onyx. It's worth its weight in gold. And uh, yeah, 
If you guys are interested, click the link below, it gets you 20% off. So thank you again, Onyx, to sponsor in this one. And now we're feeling a bit of wind build. It was forecasted to be 10 to 20 later today. I wanna play it safe, especially given that Scotty does have a history of getting motion sick a little bit. We are taking off with a tailwind. That is not advised. However, it's not so straightforward here. We do have a downhill takeoff with the tailwind, but if I were to turn around and take off into the wind, I've got a fence on the far end and I'm going into rising terrain. So it's kind of like, the not so simple thing. Like if it starts building more than what we have now, if it gets up to 15 miles an hour, I probably will take off into the wind. Anything less, we've got over a thousand feet, plus it's smooth. I mean, I can milk this thing off the ground, play in ground effect, and I'm flying into lowering terrain. I love all the, I love all the nerd airplane talk. I yeah. love it. <laughs> you even have any idea what I'm talking about? I mean, slight bit. I'm like, yeah, downhill, I get that. I feel the wind going that way, but besides that, I'm like, yeah. it's up to Trent. <laughs> well, you gotta think, so the, the wing needs air over it to create lift. So if we're going with the wind, we have to go a lot faster over the ground to get in the air mm. because we have basically 10 miles an hour that we gotta make up from the start. So we turn around, that effectively is 20 miles per hour better from the start because instead of a 10 mile an hour tailwind, we got a 10 mile an hour headwind. So does it just pop you up then? Yeah, so taking off into a headwind can be super beneficial. Again, if it wasn't rising terrain, if it wasn't the fence, if it wasn't uphill, it would be a no brainer. Um, right now I'm kind of like, I still like my, my get out of jail free of lowering terrain and nothing mm -hmm. to hit, so. How does your, you know, your approach change a little bit with taking off from something like this rather than just a runway? Well, obviously, I don't have any wind markers right now. I'm seeing us kick up dust. We have a tailwind right now. So I know that that's gonna be a factor and we don't have runway marking, so. I see the sagebrush I'm looking for. I will keep those in sight when I start my rollout. Try to keep the plane light as possible because I don't really want to like push it hard up onto the mains, even though I probably still will, just because uh, I don't want to like puncture a tire. Right. And there's half of me that says we could have gone and walked through. Okay, tail's up. Plenty of time. That was mellow. On easy. event. Easy peasy. Yeah. Hell yeah. So with those things, I just am a firm believer of like thinking through worst case scenario, start to finish, because if something happens, it can happen so fast. So the more you run through, okay, what happens if this, what happens if this? And also I, it's so easy for people like this plane, I will tell you for sure, I can take it off or land it in a hundred feet at sea level by myself, you know, with no wind or a little headwind. But you add, you, me, altitude, all that. I mean, we just use a lot more than 100 feet. So just being on the ultra conservative side is always like, that's what keeps you alive. I forgot my socks in the truck, so I did the barefoot and waders, which is a little weird. It worked out though. So I think Scotty and I are probably going to go find somewhere else to try to put some flies in today. But being that this is a flying channel and I hear some of your guys' comments, I'm probably gonna let you cover the rest of the fly fishing. So if you wanna see more of us fishing, switch over to his channel. Also, we have another adventure planned coming up tomorrow. We're gonna switch up our game plan and kind of go for uh, spring fed creeks is the goal. Mm -hmm. Something that the runoff isn't affecting as much. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like this video if you do, subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. We'll see you on the next one, peace.